Okay, so I've got, oh, I'm really torn right now because holy crap, like we have so many good people in the queue here, but I actually really want to do this one. Uh, this one is, uh, let's see here. The, they actually didn't give a name. The name is Believer in God. Uh, pronouns are he, him from yeah. Washington State. Uh, and Believer in God wants to know, are atheists actually atheists? Are they being truthful about that? Uh, can I call you Believer or should I, is there something else I can call you? Hey, yeah, Believer's fine. Cool. All right, Believer, um, you're asking, are we actually atheists? Would you like to elaborate on that at all? Sure. So do you know, like when you kind of see, let's say someone dye their hair this interesting color or something, and you know, they're kind of being edgy or a teenager or something. So I'm mm -hmm. curious if that's kind of like atheist, because I was seeing a study in Finland done in 2013 and 2014, where they asked like believers and non-believer atheists on a lie detector test. And if you would have expected like the lie detector test to be truthful for the atheists, but they had much more pressure in their heart and everything. They, they had a methodology right. with this, but you would expect um, you wouldn't expect the results if they were truthful. I and mean, this is just Finland, but yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of things there. First of all, um, I understand the argument is, is is that you know if I dye my hair blue, my hair is actually still brown. I just make it look like it's blue. Therefore, by calling my myself an atheist. I'm actually a believer. This is just an outward facade that I'm putting on. Is that what you're saying? Or maybe you're just like, um, you're like you know, like sometimes when you're like a teenager, you, I mean, yeah, you kind of got it. You know. Cool. Um, so a couple of things. First of all, just random off the cuff thing. Uh, polygraph tests are, are bullshit pseudoscience and they're not even usually admissible in court because they detect how nervous you are and how uncomfortable you are. They don't actually detect lies. Um, so there's a whole bunch of reading you can do there if you want. Um, but also I would say that, uh, even if somebody were to appear nervous when talking about God, if they say they're an atheist, it's probably because they have some trauma from religion that they are carrying with them. Like the, you know, one of the other callers that we had earlier on today, the guy from Australia who is very convinced that this God makes no sense and certainly doesn't like the guy, just like us. You know, he's anti-theist at this point, but also is fearful of hell because that's how he's been indoctrinated since he was a child. So, like, that's something that you would probably be seeing there as far as a physiological response that might look like lying. Um, in either way, like, if somebody doesn't believe in a God, all I would say is that, you know, and this is an old phrase, I'm an atheist just as much as you are, plus one. I believe in one less God than you do. All the other gods that you don't believe in, the thousands of gods that people have believed in over the years, you know, Zeus and Thor and, and, and Odin, and you don't believe in, in any of the, the Quetzalcoatl, you don't believe in, in any of the Mithra, you don't believe in any of these other gods throughout all of history, throughout all of humanity, but you do believe in this one. I don't believe in that one either. So exactly how you feel about all those other gods is how I feel about yours. And that doesn't make me a liar. It just makes me consistent. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it makes sense. Cool. What, believer, what motivation would, would I have as an atheist to not be truthful about my atheism? Or, or are you saying that I don't really know what it is I believe and don't believe? Which is it? It completely depends on the country and your environment. If you're in, let's say, no, I'm talking about it, me. I'm talking about, I'm, 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 ta I'm talking about me in this country, oh, in this you, environment. In the U.S., I'm an atheist. I, 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 I believe you're in Austin, Texas, right? So if you're, that's a pretty liberal environment. I don't think, I think you would probably get more flack if you wore something as conservative than as an atheist, liberal, or something. I know these two things don't correlate the politics and the religion completely, but you would be, you would not have, an, I don't think, much discrimination if you were an atheist, but if you were a theist in there, but if you were, let's say, in a very rural town in uh, Mississippi or something, possibly yeah. if you were a theist, you would, have, uh, less, you would have less likeliness to lie on that one. It depends where you are. It depends what the political affiliation of the place is. Well, are you, are you implying that atheists are like hiding with like a, an atheist who lives in a small town in Mississippi, like you said, they wouldn't be truthful about their atheism out in public. Is that what you're saying? I'm not, I'm not following you. Possibly. Yes. But if you are in, let's say the, um, where I am in Washington, I don't want to give exactly where, but it is liberal. If you, um, it, I think it would be, it's more trendy if you are kind of an atheist or if you have dyed hair or something like this, it's, Honestly speaking, it'd be easier to make friends than if you said like something. I'm a believer in God. Well, it's the number one thing. Yeah. It's not. It's it's not a jacket I put on. 
Yeah. If it, it, my atheism is not something I wear when I go to Starbucks. Uh, it, it is who I, it's, it's my response to the God claim. It's not my complete identity, but in the world that we're living in now with, especially in America, with so much of it being about Christian nationalism and, and faith and everything, you have to be a Christian and go to church or that you're looked upon with skepticism. I, it's, I'm not an atheist because I want to be. I'm an atheist because I don't believe in the claim. I don't accept the claim that there's a God. Uh, the, the claim that's been made by Christianity. So it's not something I take off and put on. Now, when I go out in public, if I'm in a small town, I may not wear a sign around my neck that I'm an atheist, come and harass me, but I, I am who I am. And I'm not being untruthful about it. I'm just being, I use discretion about who I talk to and how I talk to them in a particular environment. So my atheism is not something I put on and take off to make it convenient for me in certain circumstances. It is my my response to the God claim. It is who I am in that sense. Does that make sense to you? I don't want to mean to offend you in any way, right? No, I am I'm not offended. conflicted on this. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah. I am very conflicted on this one. I am not sure, as I am not an atheist, if atheists are being truthful or not. When I read works, I mean, there are different types of atheists too, right? Like you can get atheists who are conservative or liberal. And I've read some of their works both ways, and I, I'm not sure if they're truthful. I mean, it's very hard for me to determine. Well, let me, let me turn that around on you. You're, you say you're a believer in God. Are you truthful about that? Most definitely, yes. Well, then why wouldn't you accept that I'm truthful about mine? My faith says uh, that someone will have a natural inclination towards God. And even people, like if you look at the genetically modified skeptic on YouTube, he even admits if you were born non-religious, like if you're born in a society that does not have any faith or whatever, someone is more naturally as a kid to gravitate towards theism than uh, non-theism. They may make an argument from evolutionary theory or something that, let's say, the bush faith, uh, there's a lie in there. or I mean, they have the, and then they'll try to, merge this into like we have a natural belief in God, it gives us a, a purpose and it will give us like a teamwork and they'll, they'll, they'll have these evolutionary psychology ideas, but um, that is kind of what it is, right? I mean, even I, I depend, but yeah, I, I'm going because of my faith, but I even think if you go scientifically speaking, I think it, the research, I'm not sure if it's 100% clear, but I believe it's clear that people are more likely to be theists than non-theists just naturally too. Like I hear atheists so, say a lot, like the, if you read the Bible, you'll be atheist, or if you don't, um, if, if you don't like, uh, if you're not born, like people are born atheists, but I don't think it's 100 percent true. So you've talked about you know a couple of things that I think are really salient, and they kind of blend together here. One of them is that you said that people are more just now. You said that you know children are more likely to tend towards belief in God. Children are also more tend to, likely to tend towards a belief in unicorns and fairies and magic and things like this as well, because they don't have a distinction between reality and and, and magic and and you know imagination. Um, so that's yeah that that is true children are easily convinced of things because they trust their parents to not lie to them and to keep them safe so when their parents say there's this thing called god they believe it also because religion has a really great practice of indoctrination that teaches kids that only good people think what we think and if you don't think this then you're bad and you're going to be burned for all eternity in a pit of fire and that's a good thing because you're so bad that you didn't believe this thing so yeah they're going to believe that for that reason as well also, as I just stated, they have a hard, hard time separating, you know, fantasy from reality. So they're going to believe any fantastical fairy tale you tell them. So there is a lot of psychological things going on there. None of them are good, nor are they a good case for the existence of God. Also, you talked a minute ago, and this kind of ties in here. You talked a minute ago about, you know, how if you're living in a different area, it might be fashionable or easy to be an atheist. I live in Oklahoma. I have my <laughs> whole life. There are literally double digit churches within walking distance of my house. I've moved several times. That has always been the case, not on purpose. There are always churches everywhere. I've been an atheist pretty much my whole life as well. I was bullied as a child for being atheist. I've had people scream in my face about me being an atheist. I've had people come bang on my door and leave shit in my yard because I'm an atheist and I'm going to go to hell. I've been threatened because I'm an atheist and I'm going to go to hell. It has never been popular nor convenient for me to be an atheist where I am. And yet I am one because I just don't believe 
in the things that people tell me about the supernatural almighty being. Not only do I not believe that it's real, but I don't believe that it's good. Even if you could prove to me that it's real, I don't want anything to do with it. So, but also, fun fact, I did believe in ghosts for a long time, and I believed in magic for a long time. And I believed in, in like, you know, drawing witchcraft pentacles and circles and making good luck happen and things. I believed in that until I was like a teenager as well. So like, I believed in those things because that's the culture that I was raised in, in my house. And my parents told me that was real and I didn't question it because I was a child. The exact same reasons why people grow up Christian and tend to believe those things around where I live now. You grow up in a household that has that. So everything you've said so far, about why you don't think that atheists are being genuine. I'm sorry, it just doesn't hold up. All of it has a logical explanation, and every one of those logical explanations goes against believing in a god. So I, I don't know where exactly you can go beyond that, as far as logic is concerned. Okay, uh, then I guess, I mean, that one is a little bit anecdotal because it is to you, but... Um... I understand. For sure, but you're asking us if we're being serious, so I'm giving you my anecdotal response. I mean, there are other things, too. Like, for example, some people may think their intellect is higher than, like, a di divine intellect, right? Like, um, if you read the Old Testament, some of the rabbis would think they're, like, they would pride their intellect a lot, even over, like, God's, right? Like, for example, they would argue with God, and even when God, I mean, let's not get into the theological aspect, but if, I mean, to be honest, I see that today, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I mean, it may not be fashionable, but there are, I've seen a lot of different reasons, for example, people may have an arrogance, they may, intellect is a huge thing, if someone is smart, they may want to show their arrogance, they may want to think they're smarter than God or something, so... And Arachne thought that she was a better weaver than than Athena, and that's why she got turned into a spider. So we can all learn from that, right? Do you remember that story from Greek mythology? Arachne thought she was a better weaver I, than Athena, and so to punish her for her hubris, Athena turned her into a spider to spin and weave silk for the rest of her life. Is that a thing that we can now base our reality on? Like, is that... Why do I care what it says in the Bible? Why do I care what people believe about God or whether they think they're smarter or whatever like that? If I don't think God is real and I don't think the Bible is real, what difference does it make? Sure. But I would argue for that, we can kind of rule that one out because like, let's say if there was a God, why would he make his faith go extinct? Why wouldn't he keep one of his faiths in, in the... Um in the limelight, right? Like, um, you can argue... If there was a God, why yeah. would 25,000 people starve to death every day? That's a real figure. 25,000 people, including over 10,000 children, starve to death every single day. That's more than 1,000 people an hour. In the time it's taken us to do this show, over 1,000 people have starved to death. If there's a God, what's up with that? We can ask these questions. It doesn't change the fact that this God does or doesn't exist. That, that does nothing to help us here. But I would honestly argue, for example, I mean, I know you do not agree, but I would argue if I look at, I agree, I cannot get like a peer-reviewed type paper to prove God or anything. There's of course not. But I think if I look at the signs of a God, I think it's pretty apparent. Like if you just look at, let's say, the Abrahamic religions on, let's say, something like homosexuality, and you look at, the, let's say, monkeypox, you look at HIV, you look at the diseases that come through that, I mean, you'll hear the media say something much different than what really is going on. And what's going on, it goes with God's word, at least for the Abrahamic religions, right? So I think you do know that HIV and monkeypox do not only affect LGBT people, right? It does not only, but I mean, it's like 97% of people are from that, right? I mean, it's not a complete. That's not a true figure at all. And also, if you study the very basics of epidemiology, you'll understand how self-isolating groups work. So there was a, Mer like MRSA, for example, MRSA spreads predominantly amongst athletes. Does that mean that MRSA is an athlete's disease or a punishment for being an athlete? Or does it mean that athletes tend to be in close physical contact and share locker rooms together and therefore there's a higher rate of spread? So even though MRSA can affect everybody, it has a significantly higher rate in athletes because they're a self-isolating group. I don't know, honestly speaking, but I know God has cursed, for example, people who have gone to, uh, like, who have... You know, uh, like, you know God is cursed? Uh, Wait a minute. How do you know God has cursed certain people? How do you know that? 
I mean, I'm just seeing it in front of my eyes, and I'm even seeing like the media who are mostly non-religious just denying it in front of them. Like they will give all You're these not, explanations. Because like, somebody who what isn't you, religious says it isn't true, that means that it must be true. What are you seeing in front of your eyes that gives you proof that God has cursed a certain group of people or any person? What are you seeing in front of your eyes? Break it down for me. I'm seeing disease. Sure. What I am seeing is if I look at like media or something, right, I am seeing them giving, not telling me the full picture, right? No, what and have you not... seen? What have you seen in front of your eyes that give you proof yeah. that God has cursed anyone? Sure. What if have you, you go seen? On a per capita basis, if you go on a per capita basis for monkeypox or HIV, it is by far higher. I see his. Uh, the right, we just covered with, that. There are other diseases that. that are higher in other communities. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, okay. Literally, for, anybody for, can get monkeypox or HIV. You, you've kind of got off the rails well, here, believer in God, with your biases against certain people groups, and you're really, um, you're really very offensive in the way that you talk about certain people groups and claiming that the God that you believe in has cursed them wherein they get sick and die. You know, I'm just going to say I that, I, that idea, I, I, that idea, that idea is okay. bullshit. That idea is bullshit and you're full of shit for believing it. Can I be more direct than I that? That's fine. I apologize if I offended any community or anything. However, for I'm not, I don't want to reveal exactly my faith, but it is, it's been clear on that what it says. So, I mean, I go with my faith. I take it seriously, right? So... If, let's let's yeah, try this then. Any God, yeah. if there is a God, if there is a God, if your God is real, any God that would punish people with disease and death for loving someone is an yeah. asshole. I don't want yeah. anything to do with that God. I'm very happy that I don't have any evidence for that God. And if you could prove that that God exists right now on the show, I would admit that that God exists and I would still say he's an asshole and I don't want anything to do with him. I would not worship your God if it Wait. was real. So let me, oh my God. So you are saying that if, even if the God was real, you would still not worship him. Just like the. Yes, absolutely. A God absolutely that would punish people with doubt. disease and death and that would punish certain groups of people because of who they love. I don't want any part of that yeah. God. And I feel sorry for you that you believe in a God like that. I would be his biggest enemy, even if he was real. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. And to Forrest's point, this thousands of people who starve to death every day because this omnipresent, omnipotent, omnibenevolent God doesn't give a shit about them. If he's mm -hmm. present, if he's if he exists and he's present and active and able to do something to actually help people and doesn't, he's a moral monster. Yup, absolutely. And I want nothing to do when with we, him. When we look at societies that have more focused on just material goods over God's commandments, even though they may have food and everything at night, they'll suffer more from loneliness and dying alone, and they will not even get married. Even yeah. in these other countries you are mentioning that are theists, even if they die, let's say, from starvation, they at least are not lonely. They have some social connections. Oh, dear they God. Have yeah. have I'd rather be that. single than starve to death, dude. I, I don't want to hear any more about your God. we got a lot of calls lined up. I think we need to move on from believing okay. God. Yeah, your God yeah, sounds yeah, really I, gross, I you, and yeah. the way that you're describing him is awful. Yeah, well, nothing to do with you or your God. So, so here's a truthful atheist saying goodbye to you. Have a good day, believer.